we were so busy trying to achieve some stuff that we didn't have time to think about it. But now we are settling, we are relaxed. We are in, my father once told me, you guys here in New Zealand are like living in slow motion. And there is when we started to miss some, some, some things. Some, yeah. that, that was the, the breaking point, the, yeah. Hi everyone, this is us. <laughs> Samuel and Gina. I would She's say my that. partner. Yeah, the partner. Again, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we we moved to Christchurch and Samuel has his position at work. I found a job the, here. The, the, those kind of positions that I never, never thought I was going to get in New Zealand. And my position was exactly that in the fluid dynamic uh, department. Flight test, it was just a dream. It was a dream. But suddenly, because I guess that is our nature as human beings, we started to feel like some, something was missing. We, we will be calling home every Saturday, Sunday to our families. Where, and Semi had always this thing on his mind, like if he could, he would open a restaurant. And we started to think, okay, you really want to explore this area. And we really miss asado, and all our friends will come and eat with us. So why, why, don't, you, why don't we try? And Samuel said, okay, I'm getting a food truck. That's, that's where El Quincho started for yeah, us. Yeah, where, where it all began. And the idea of the truck wasn't that we wanted to stop doing what we were doing and start from, from scratch. Uh, we wanted to open a restaurant, but we said, no, we need to sort of prove the concept. So after running, after running the, the restaurant for a year and a half, we, had, we, we got into a point where we had to make a decision. Uh, just trading on the weekends wasn't enough to make it a business. And it seemed like destiny, a little bit of destiny, because one day we were just about to say, okay, let us close this adventure. This is not what we want to do for the rest of our life. And then suddenly we, we received this call from Chris Sprague, which is one of the managers here at the Riverside. And he's like, hey guys, I saw your truck parked, I, I guess, that outside your house. And I, I see that you do Argentinian barbecue. And, and, yeah, and he, he said something that was key thing, I guess, because he checked our reviews and and he said guys you're doing a really good product do, do you want to be part of riverside market and we said let us think about it it took us almost four months at least to say yes and sign everything because at the end of the day none of us is a is a professional a professional, a professional chef we haven't so, got any background in hospitality yeah. whatsoever and he was like well hold on, hold on a second guys i have the, uh, this friend ignacio which has been working with me for i don't know 10 years now uh, and he's quite keen like he's he's ready to move on he's ready to to try new experiences he wants to do a career somewhere else do you want me to talk with him so that was the moment where we said, okay, if Ignacio is with us, we had this big chat with him, if Ignacio is with us, we can, we can do this, we can definitely do this. Hi, my, my name is Nacho, I am the head chef uh, of El Quincho. So we started interviewing people and we came across a really particular CV. And they contacted me, I was still in Argentina, I remember I was having my farewell party with my family and I told them, hey, I have an interview now. And they were like, what? Yes, in New Zealand it's midday, I need to have that interview now. Uh, so this girl from Argentina who, who knew that we were opening because he had family here. And I talked to these guys. Um, 
they looked like they were up for something amazing, but at the same time, they were also <laughs> trying to understand what was this about, because they were also new in setting up a new restaurant. So we interviewed Catalina. She was still in Argentina. Gina actually told me, hey, why don't you come to Christchurch? And she committed, like she committed to a job. She said, yes, I will be there. I will be coming to New Zealand. And so she started to, to ask me, where do you think I should live? And should I go and, and take this place, this area? Can you give me any advice? And I said to her, look, if, if you're okay with that, I don't know if this is going to sound weird or not because we don't actually even know each other. You can live at our place in the meantime. Uh, you can come and stay at home. You can come and stay at home for a week, two weeks. And she was like, okay, these guys are amazing. <laughs> they're offering me food and their house and a job. So I found myself in my car one day going to the airport to pick up this person that I didn't know. Uh, I couldn't be happier and I felt like, okay, I'm still home. Um, I'm going to cry. No. <laughs> like I said, the New Zealand taught us that, just, just trust. Trust your neighbor, trust um, the, the guy that is, I don't know, picking up the rubbish in the street. Trust everyone because everything will be fine. It and changed our mindset, it absolutely. Completely. Yeah. So suddenly we are receiving in our house this person that we don't know. But at the same time, it's something that you would expect from friends in Argentina. It seems like we are just a family, like, like El Quincho today is our extensive family, the guys. Without them, yeah, we couldn't they, they, accomplish anything. They, they have shaped El Quincho. Para mí, trabajar en El Quincho es algo super super importante y también a la misma vez me hace super feliz tanto como estar con te eh, de, de la cultura compartir y transmitir eh, la, la cultura hacia hacia el cliente eh, lo mismo que the opening day came in and like we were all here staring at each other like What's now? <laughs> we weren't sure what was going to happen and it was an amazing first day. I remember starting here at 8.30 and leaving at 11.30. It's like, wow, this is awesome. And I was like overexcited, <laughs> like I wanted more. Uh, but they gave me a day off the day afterwards. <laughs> um, probably the only one ever. No, kidding. <laughs> we are not afraid to work. We are not afraid to to spend late nights, we are not afraid uh, to pay debts, we are like, but we are afraid to disappoint the people, our customers, like we do this to bring joy. She tried the choripan and she said, I closed my eyes and for an instant, I was in Uruguay. And that was, okay, yeah, we got the right one. Asado is this gathering moment. It's hours of chats and playing with your nephews and having drinks and playing cards. And it's like probably six, eight hours of a family gathering, being there all together and not wanting to live. It's a comfort zone. That's what Asado is for me.
I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to every one of you who watched this video today. Um, it is a strong story of culture, it's a story of community, it's a story of the preservation of love for one another. And I think during this time of isolation, it's a time to reflect back and remember those days that we were able to go out and have a barbecue and, and, and share wine and, and share food and share conversation basically. Um, and so creating this documentary was a really nice reminder that we are still connected. It, um, it actually <laughs> jerked a couple of tears when I was uh, creating this because it's been such a long time coming. Uh, in fact, it was shot back in October last year. But we finally got our act together and through building story bites, we're able to tell these stories, not just once every year or once every few months, but actually every single week. And so finally, if you feel like this channel gives value back into your life, I really encourage you, please do subscribe and click that notification bell. It really supports everything we do and everything we represent. And so this is Story Bites, sharing our love for people and food one bite at a time. See you next week. Thank you.